Hello everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today, we are going to be talking about Bridgerton and more specifically, my favorite Bridgerton, Benedict. So if you know me at all, if you follow me anywhere, you are fully aware probably of how much I love Benedict Bridgerton. I've talked about it before on this channel. I talk about it a lot on Instagram, a lot on Twitter, but I love Benedict. He is by far my favorite Bridgerton. His book is my favorite book of the ones that I've read. Now, I've only read three. I have read An Offer from a Gentleman, which is Benedict's book. I have read Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, which is Pollen's book. And I've read To Sir Philip with Love, which is Eloise's book. And I plan to read Francesca's book very soon. I'm just a busy woman, okay? However, Benedict's book is my favorite. Benedict is my favorite Bridgerton. I love Luke Thompson. So you can imagine how sad I was when I found out that Benedict was not season three. Shocked and heartbroken don't even begin to describe how I felt when I found out that Benedict was not getting season three. However, today I am here to talk to you about why I think and why I'm pretty confident in the fact that Benedict is going to be the lead of Bridgerton season four. Now, I will have you know, I am filming this as of May 29th. On June 13th, when Bridgerton season three part two comes out, we will probably know who the lead of season four is. If you are here after June 13th, don't comment and be like, you're so stupid. They obviously set up Eloise to be the next lead in episode eight. I haven't seen it yet. So this is me filming well before season three part two comes out. So if you're here after season three part two, don't act like I filmed this after season three part two came out. Let's not do that, okay? As of season three, part one of Bridgerton, this is why I think Benedict is going to be the lead of season four. By the way, just a heads up, this video is obviously going to contain spoilers for the books. If you haven't read at least Benedict's book, probably Francesca's book and Eloise's book as well, I'm going to probably spoil some of those books for you, so just a heads up there. For starters, and I think the most obvious reason, is that Benedict is the last one of like the older siblings that's not married yet. To have his younger brother Colin and have his younger sister Daphne surpass him when it comes to getting married, that's fine right? Even Francesca technically might pass Benedict in part two of season three because as we know from her book, she marries John Sterling at a very young age. But if any more of Benedict's younger siblings get married before him, that's going to be embarrassing. We're going to need to get that figured out immediately. We know that Benedict's love interest in his book is a character named Sophie Beckett. We have not met Sophie to any degree in the canon of Bridgerton. We haven't even heard a single person utter her name. There's been no mention of her father, the Earl of Penwood, quite literally no mentions of Sophie in any way, shape or form, which by the way, you can't see it, but I'm wearing a Benefi shirt. Isn't it so cute? I got this off of an Etsy shop and I will link it in the description down below for my fellow Benefi stance. However, back to my point, no mention of Sophie, no mention of her father, no mention of Penwood Park, nothing like that. However, what we do have is Lady Cowper. Now in the show, Lady Cowper has only ever been referred to as Lady Cowper. That's it. No first name has been said within the show. But Grace Gorman, who is the hairstylist for Bridgerton, posted a picture of the actress who plays Lady Cowper in her Lady Cowper makeup. And in the caption, it's revealed to us that Lady Cowper's first name is Araminta, which happens to be the name of Sophie's horrible, horrible stepmother in the book. And I do think it's definitely worth noting this considering how much more screen time the Calpers have gotten in season three so far. Like the Calpers have gone from just being like side side characters to Cressida has a lot of screen time in this season. We're getting a lot more info on Cressida's parents. We're seeing Cressida's home. We're getting a lot of info on the Calpers and I just think it's definitely worth mentioning that Lady Calper's name is technically the same name as Sophie's stepmother in the book. Now, so far in season three, Benedict has done virtually nothing. He literally has nothing to do. He lost his passion for art in season two. He's avoiding debutantes and mothers left and right, which is exactly how he is at the beginning of his book. And even though Benedict has extremely limited screen time in season three, part one, there are a lot of hints in just the first part of season three that I think point at Benedict being next. For starters, in episode one, Kate and Violet have a conversation about Violet moving into a dower house now that Kate and Anthony are married. Kate says she doesn't mind Violet staying in the house a little bit longer and she actually quite likes her help around the house. So that explains why Violet hasn't moved out quite yet. 
Now, in photos that we have of season three, part two so far, a lot of fans have been speculating that we are going to get news that Kate and Anthony are pregnant in part two. We know in Benedict's book that Violet throws the iconic masquerade ball to celebrate her last night in Bridgerton House before she moves to her dower house. Then later in the book, Benedict reveals to Sophie that just one month after Violet moved out, Kate and Anthony give birth to their first child. So if Canthony is in fact pregnant in part two of season three, this sets up a perfect timeline for Violet to move out of Bridgerton House, I don't know, maybe around season four, episode one, which would make season four Benedict and Sophie's season. Season three has also spent an abnormal amount of time emphasizing the fact that Benedict is a really good dancer. He just doesn't do it much, I guess. I think Benedict had about 12 minutes of screen time in part one, and half of that screen time was spent setting up that Benedict is a really good dancer, and the other half of that screen time was spent basically emphasizing that Benedict has no purpose and that he has no interest in the marriage mark. Benedict has a conversation with the character Will Mondrich where he says all of these rules are to keep the marriage mart churning, but once you have performed your function and found your match, you are free. Benedict saying this really sets him up to meet Sophie, who not only frees him from society's rules, but also helps show him that he doesn't care about society's rules at all in the first place. Also in season three, Benedict's romantic interest is a character named Lady Tilly Arnold. Now, Benedict has had different romantic interests every season. Season one, he had a bit of a thing with Genevieve Delacroix. And in season two, Benedict is into Tessa, who is the model at the Royal Academy. What makes Tilly Arnold different from Genevieve and Tessa is that Tilly is considered to be a woman of high society. Genevieve and Tessa had something in common with Sophie where they're all a part of the working class, whereas Tilly is very much not a part of the working class. However, Tilly still challenges societal norms and doesn't really follow the rules in her own way. And so even though I feel like Tilly as a character is very opposite of what Sophie is, they still have a couple things in common. So it's nice to see a sort of underlying theme between all of Benedict's romantic interests that I feel like all pave a road to lead to Sophie. However, Tilly is definitely the most different from Sophie out of all of Benedict's romantic interests so far. And I think that having Benedict date somebody that is so different from what his type normally is, is going to help push him in the direction of Sophie for season four. I think by the end of season three, part two, Benedict is going to realize that Tilly is not what he wants when it comes to romance and love. And that's gonna leave the door wide open for one Miss Sophie Beckett. There are also plenty of things outside of the show itself that leads me to believe that Benedict will be the lead of season four. And that was kind of a tongue twister. First of all, Julia Quinn, the author of the books, shared this image on Instagram a couple weeks back. Everything in this image is a reference to Paul in season, season three, except for one thing, one, big giant thing and that is the masquerade mask which as we all know the masquerade party is one of the most iconic parts of benedict's book so it could mean nothing but it also could mean something another thing that i think is really interesting is that luke thompson is scheduled to be on the view on june 6th to promote bridgerton season three i think them getting Luke to promote season three is like a really weird choice. Instead of getting the two leads of season three that have already done a lot of press for this season together. And I think it's also worth noting that Bridgerton season four is set to begin filming on June 10th, meaning we might know who the lead of season four is by then. Now, this next reason that I'm going to lay out for you guys is actually one of the main things convincing me that Benedict is going to be season four. So the code name for the filming of Bridgerton season four is Vauxhall, which is a reference to Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens. Now I'm going to give you a bit of a history lesson real quick. Vauxhall Gardens is both a place within Bridgerton and also within the real world. In Bridgerton, Vauxhall is where Daphne and Simon have their whole big, incredible dance number at the very end of season one, episode one. In real life, Vauxhall was the pinnacle of nightlife in the 18th and 19th century in London. Long story short, a pleasure garden was a dedicated outdoor space for entertainment such as music, dancing, eating, drinking, and these events often included surprises such as fireworks, operas, illuminations, and most notably, masquerades. In 1749, Vauxhall hosted a masquerade to celebrate a treaty that ended the war of the Austrian succession. There's a quote from a politician saying, it was the prettiest spectacle I ever saw. Nothing in a fairy tale ever surpassed it. 
Now, this masquerade ball was actually considered to be one of the most scandalous events at Vauxhall, causing it to gain a rather infamous reputation. So season four, having the codename of Vauxhall, when Vauxhall is most known for its scandalous masquerade parties, I think is definitely a major hint to the fact that Benedict is going to be season four. Now for reference, here are the codenames for the filming of all other seasons of Bridgerton. Season one, the codename was just Bridgerton, which is pretty self-explanatory. Season two, the codename for filming was Waterloo. And if you pay attention, season two has a lot of references to battlefields all throughout it. They call the Paul Mall field a field of combat that. Anthony even mentions Napoleon in the very first episode of season two, and basically all of season two kind of feels like a battlefield just with the romance of Kate and Anthony. The codename for season three was Hampstead. Hampstead is an area in London known for a lot of things, but most importantly, it's known for its literary associations. Hampstead is known for housing a lot of famous poets and writers, including Byron, who is a poet that's actually mentioned quite a lot in Bridgerton. So obviously this is a reference to the fact that Penelope and Colin are both writers. So every season, the code name of the filming has something to do with who the lead is of that season. So the only logical conclusion for season four being Vauxhall is Benedict. Jess Bernal, who is the new showrunner for Bridgerton, has said a lot of things in a lot of different interviews that sort of point at Benedict being the lead for season four. Jess and Shonda Rhimes constantly say that their main reason for having Pollen be season three is because they were growing tired of the dynamic of Colin not realizing that Penelope has a crush on him. So you might be asking, what does this have to do with Benedict? Well, if you ask me, Benedict has roughly been the exact same character for the past three seasons. He hasn't gone anywhere. Every season, he goes through something where it seems like he's kind of getting to where he needs to be, and then something happens that pushes him right back to square one, and then rinse and repeat for the next season. So if they were growing tired of the dynamic between Penelope and Colin, surely they're growing tired of Benedict being a boring, pointless side character. Jess Bernal also said in an interview that Benedict's story is going to really open up the world of Bridgerton in a big way. To me, this makes a lot of sense considering that a lot of Benedict's story takes place outside of London, away from the town, and away from society. This would explain why they switch Pollen and Benedict's season. Because in the books, at least, after you get Benedict and Sophie, Eloise and Francesca both have storylines that take them away from London society. So instead of having Benedict season and being pretty far removed from what we know is Bridgerton right now, we have Pollen, who, similar to Kate and Anthony, similar to Daphne and Simon, a lot of their season takes place in the heart of London. And then you're gonna have Benedict, Eloise, Francesca, whose stories take place kind of more in the country, far away from the town. They don't really involve society in their stories. And speaking of Eloise and Francesca, what about those two? I know that both Eloise and Francesca have had a lot more screen time in season three than Benedict has. So it's very easy to look at those two characters and think, yeah, one of them is gonna be the lead of season four. As for Eloise, I don't think her character has warmed up to the idea of marriage at all throughout season three. Eloise's main focus so far of season three, part one, has been her relationship with Penelope and how that's been affecting her. And I think that Eloise's main focus for part two is going to be now that Penelope and Colin are engaged, how is Eloise gonna deal with the fact that she knows that Penelope is Lady Whistledown? Eloise has also been spending most of her time with Cressida, not much of Theo has been mentioned, and Philip isn't even on Eloise's radar in season three. Plus, if the show keeps Eloise's story from the books, she genuinely can't get married before Benedict and Sophie do. In the books, Eloise turns down like six different proposals because she wants the kind of love that Benedict and Sophie have. During Eloise's book, she also spends a lot of time at My Cottage, which is the name of the place where Benedict and Sophie live. Not to mention, Philip saves the life of Benedict and Sophie's child, which is kind of a catalyst for Eloise realizing that she likes him in a way. I don't know, I'm not the biggest Philip fan, but it's fine. So not only is Benefi's story crucial to Eloise's story, but Eloise's story, if they keep it accurate to the book, is a really great opportunity for the audience to see Benedict and Sophie happily married. Much like how we're seeing a lot of Canthony being happily married in season three. So if you ask me, Eloise cannot come before Benedict and Sophie. As for Francesca, if you don't know how her book goes, basically she marries John Sterling at a very young age and they're happy together until he unfortunately dies. But Francesca gets a second chance at love with John's cousin, Michael Sterling. 
Now in season three, we've already met John Sterling and we've seen John and Francesca court a little bit. So it is safe to assume that we might see a wedding between John and Francesca by the end of season three, part two. However, that does not necessarily mean that Francesca is going to lead us into season four. Not only is the actress new as Hannah Dodd has replaced Ruby Stokes in the role this season, but in previous seasons of Bridgerton, Francesca was barely even there to begin with. For more than half of each season, she was away at school studying, learning how to play the piano, you know, I don't know, whatever girlies did in the 1800s. But long story short, I think we need another season with Francesca to really get to know her as a character before we even dive into her season. Because if they just jump right into Francesca's season when we don't really know her, we're not attached to her yet. The general audience isn't attached to her yet. Like they don't know her yet. You kind of need to give a little bit of time for us to get to know Francesca first. I also know that Shonda Rhimes loves to make people cry. Like, I think she literally gets paid to make people sob violently. So I'd be willing to bet that they want us to get to know Francesca and John together as a couple for a while before they kill him. Just so that when he dies, it hurts so much more than it does in the book. So although I do think that we're going to see Francesca and John get married by the end of season three, I don't think that they're gonna be the leads of season four. I do think they might be the most important subplot of season four though. So in conclusion, what else are they going to do with Benedict if they don't make him the lead of season four? Their reasoning for skipping over Benedict for season three is barely working as it is. Like, yes, it makes sense to skip over Benedict for the sake of Pollen, but Jess Bernal has said on multiple occasions that Benedict is such a fun and free-spirited character, and they want to have more fun with him as a character before he settles down. In one interview, Jess literally said, delaying Benedict season means you get more time with him before he becomes an old married man, which is just a crazy thing to say if you ask me and makes me doubt her as the showrunner for the show. I'm sorry. I don't like her very much as a showrunner. I don't think they're doing season three very well, but that's like a whole other story for another time. As of season three, part one, Benedict literally only has 12 minutes of screen time. And speaking for myself, I literally do not care about the meaningless and soulless screen time that they're giving us for Benedict. Benedict fans do not care about seeing him for just 20 minutes each season doing absolutely nothing. What we care about is seeing his love story with Sophie develop meaning that we want his season. How that isn't clicking in Jess's head is ridiculous to me. How Jess thinks that 20 minutes of meaningless, and when I say meaningless, I genuinely mean that Benedict as a character has no point on screen right now, especially in season three. How Jess thinks that 20 meaningless minutes of screen time can outweigh an entire season of seeing this beautiful love story develop blows my mind. It blows my mind. When you're the showrunner of a romance show, you should never describe a character finding love as becoming a boring old married man. If that is your viewpoint of romance stories, you should not be the showrunner of a show that is adapting romance novels. But that's just my opinion. In each season, Benedict's storylines are fun, sure, but they're all irrelevant and inconsequential to the main plot of the season. And season three is seemingly no different. Not only are they inconsequential to the main plot of each season, but they're also inconsequential to the development of Benedict as a character in the first place. Because like I said, every single season, Benedict goes through a character arc just for something to happen that sets him right back to square one. Every single season, it is rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. How many times can they do that? before it's just ridiculous that he hasn't met Sophie yet. I don't think they can do it for another season. I don't even think they can successfully do it for season three because so far, Benedict as a character in season three is a far cry from the Benedict that we have known for the past two seasons. Now, maybe Benedict feels super different in season three because they're trying to bridge the gap between show Benedict and book Benedict who do have some differences in their personalities. But we won't know if that's the case for sure until we find out who the lead of season four is. And if Benedict is not the lead of season four, his character will continue to slip further and further into the background of this show, risking losing his character altogether. Already in season three, the only two Bridgertons that do not have more screen time than Benedict are Hyacinth and Gregory, the youngest Bridgerton siblings. 
the two Bridgerton siblings that are not out in society. Yes, makes sense for them to not have as much screen time. Benedict, the second born of the Bridgerton family, coming in at the bottom when it comes to the amount of screen time, that's just insane. I'm sorry. And not to mention that the screen time that Benedict has is kind of pointless. Now, of course, I'm ranting about this without knowing the overall arc of his character because I haven't seen season three, part two yet. But so far, Benedict just feels like he's meandering. He's just floating. Benedict is, without a doubt, a fan favorite character. Obviously, every Bridgerton character has fans, but I think it's safe to say that there's an overwhelming amount of love for Benedict as a character, especially from the general audience, especially from the non-book reading audience who just watches Bridgerton as a show. Bridgerton can only keep giving Benedict the same storyline every season before it becomes unbearingly repetitive and boring. If Bridgerton showrunners and writers were smart people, they would know that they need to give Benedict something important to do next season, or they're gonna lose a lot of people. Benedict can only be wandering aimlessly and claiming that his life has no purpose for so long before it becomes ridiculous. Skipping Benedict once already wreaked enough havoc in the Bridgerton fandom. I think skipping him a second time would be an insane risk for Bridgerton to take. And honestly, I think that they would lose a lot of viewers in the process if they skip Benedict again and don't make him the lead of season four. Like I said, I don't really like Jess Brunel as a showrunner. I don't really like what she's doing with a whole lot of characters in Bridgerton season three so far. I know I haven't seen the whole season, so I have to stick it out to the end, but hey, Netflix, if you're gonna split your season in half and make us wait a month for the second half of your season, this is what you get. You get people getting angry at the people you hire to be your showrunners and your writers because you're gatekeeping the end of the season and people aren't gonna wanna wait a month to share their criticisms. So you get criticisms based off of just four episodes and based off of four episodes, I don't like Jess Bernal as a showrunner. Sorry, I don't. I don't like the way that a lot of characters have been written in season three, and I don't like the way that Jess talks about a lot of characters in interviews. And it deeply worries me for the fact that she is also in charge of season four. But I think that's a whole other topic and that's a whole other video. If Benedict is not the lead for Bridgerton season four, they have to at least do something interesting with him. He can't fall in love with yet another working class or out of the box woman. He can't keep acting like he's purposeless and needs to find himself. He needs something, something of substance. And I think that something is Sophie Beckett. That's the only answer. Obviously, I'm very passionate about both Benedict and Sophie as characters. So this video is mainly for people who are also very passionate about Benedict and are passionate about Benedict finding love. If you're most passionate about Eloise, you probably want Eloise to be season four. Or if you're more passionate about Francesca, you probably want Francesca to be season four. It's very normal for you to want your specific favorite Bridgerton character to be the lead of next season, because what we all want is the same thing. We just wanna see our favorite Bridgerton character have their love story, right? This was basically just all the reasons that I think Benedict is gonna be the lead of next season and all the signs that I think point to him being the lead. Hopefully we'll know soon. Hopefully we'll know by the time part two comes out. Apparently there are going to be hints in part two that basically tell us who's gonna be the lead of season four without actually telling us. So if Violet says she's throwing a masquerade ball, y'all know who is coming. Y'all know who's coming. It's Sophie's season. But that pretty much does it for this video. Make sure you guys follow me on all of my other social medias, especially Twitter. I tweet a lot about Bridgerton over there. Make sure you check out my podcast that I have with my boyfriend. And most importantly, make sure you check out my Patreon where you can watch my reactions to Bridgerton season three, part one, along with my reactions to Bridgerton season three, part two, when part two drops, my reactions will be up over there. Plus over on my Patreon, you will also find commentary tracks for Bridgerton season one and season two. So make sure you go and check out my Patreon. The link is in the description down below. But that does it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next time.